right then my friends, so hopefully you're comfortable with the basics of Dart now and I'd like to now shift focus and move on to classes. So classes in Dart and in any other programming language as well are basically a way to define and create custom objects with specified properties and methods. For example, I might be developing an online food menu application which required me to make new menu item objects quite frequently, which would then get displayed on the menu, right? Now, all of those menu item objects will probably have the same properties attached to them. So for example, a title and a price. And I might also want them to have custom methods too, like a format method, which formats the menu into a string, which could then be output to the menu in the application. So what I could do in this case is I could make a class called menu item, which describes those menu item objects. And inside the class, I define what properties each menu item object should have and what methods each menu item object should have as well. And then whenever I wanted to create a new menu item object, I do so using that class. Now, classes in any programming language is a huge topic and one which I could spend several hours discussing. But for now, I just want to focus on the essentials of how we create a class in Dart how we make new objects based on that class, and also have a quick look at class inheritance as well. And again, it would probably be beneficial if you have at least a basic understanding of classes from another programming language first of all, but that's not absolutely essential because we will be keeping this quite high level for now. All right then, so let's have a bash at creating a new class. So the way we create a new class is by saying class first of all, then a name for the class, which I'm gonna call menu item and then open up your curly braces. Now inside here, we can define all the different properties that we want menu item objects to have. For example, we want a title property, which will be a string. So we could say string title. We also want a price property, which will be a double. So we'd say double and then price. So right now we're seeing all menu item objects are gonna have these two properties, a title and a price, and they're a string and a double respectively. So now we're getting to errors because these must have a value. Now, if I set this equal to a value, like, I don't know, pizza or something, and then the price is equal to 9.99, those errors go away, but this isn't what we want to do because now every time we create a new menu item object, the values of the title and the price are all gonna be the same, these two things. And I'm gonna demonstrate that. I'm gonna say var noodles is equal to a menu item like so, and do a semicolon. I'll also do var pizza and set that equal to a menu item as well and a semicolon at the end. Now, what I'm going to do is print out noodles.title and then I'm also going to print out the pizza.title. And by the way, we can see the different properties available to us here, price and title, because we added those to the class. So. Let me now try running this to see what gets printed over here in the console. And we can see both are pizza, which is what we said the title was. The same would be true if we output the price instead. So we don't wanna do this. We don't wanna hard code those values because we want every different food object or menu item object that we create to have different values for the title and the price. We want to kind of declare those right here by passing in maybe arguments. So we can do that. We could pass in an argument right here for the noodles. And the first one would be a string, maybe for the title. And we'd say this is just veg noodles. The second one could be the price. So we'll say 9.99 for that. Down here for the pizza, we'll say volcano pizza. And then the price for that is gonna be 12.99. So now we're passing those into the class constructor essentially, but we don't have a constructor declared over here. Now a constructor is a special function inside a class that runs when we create a new instance of the class. The way we create a constructor in Dart is by creating a function, the same name as the class itself. So menu item. Now, what we do is accept these two things, these two properties, title and price inside this constructor. So the first one would be a string, which is the title. And the second one would be a double, which is the price. Oops, we want to say double and then a space price. Okay, so we're accepting those in. However, we're not assigning them to these properties right here. We're just kind of passing them in. Now, instead of saying string, title, and double price, the way we do this is by saying this dot title and this dot price. 
So what this is doing is basically saying, okay, when you create a new instance of this menu item, pass in these two arguments right here. The first one is a string, second one is a double. Now, when we call this function, this is gonna run automatically and it's gonna take this value and assign it to this.title, so this. It's gonna take the second value and assign it to this.price right here. So for this instance now, we're gonna have a title property, which is veg noodles, and we're gonna have a price property, which is 9.99. For this, it's gonna be volcano pizza and 12.99. So I'm going to print out a couple more things. So we'll say print noodles.price, and then underneath this one, we'll print out the pizza.price. All right, so let's run this and see if it works. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, we can see veg noodles 9.99, Volcano Pizza, $12.99, awesome. Now just very quickly, I wanted to mention, notice we've used dot notation right here, which is very much more like objects in JavaScript. So when we create objects using a class, they are kind of like traditional objects in the sense that we have dot notation. Whereas with maps, which were kind of like JavaScript objects, we use square bracket notation to grab the properties from the map, okay? So just something to be aware of. When we're creating objects using a class, we use dot notation, but for maps, we use square brackets like this, and then we pass in the key name. Now that would probably be a string like so, all right? All right then, so let's change this back. All right then, so we have these two properties defined on the menu item. I'd also like to define a method on this so that each instance of this menu item class could access that method on the instance. So let's create that down here. It's going to be a function which returns a string. So we say string first of all, then the function name, which is going to be format. And inside this function, we just need to return a value, which is a string. All right then. So what I'd like to do is return the title and the price. So I can access the title just by saying title. And remember when we output a variable inside a string, we use dollar sign. And then I'm going to use two little hyphens and a caret to say is going to be equal to price like so all right so this is not special characters this is just me making an arrow um, so that when it's formatted it says the title and then an arrow and then how much the item is all right so now i could use that up here so what i'm going to do is get rid of all this and i'll say noodles dot format instead and you can see we have access to that now and then i'll do the same for the pizza so we'll say print and it's gonna be pizza.format, like so. We need our semicolons as well. All right, so now I'm gonna run this and we should see both of those formatted food items. Awesome, cool. Okay then, so now we have this menu item class which we can use to make different food menu item objects, which is cool. But now imagine that we had different kinds of menu items that need slightly different properties as well as the title and the price. For example, we might have pizzas on the menu which require a toppings property, but all other menu items don't really need that property. We might also have, I don't know, baguettes on the menu and baguette objects might need a fillings property, whereas all of the other menu items don't really need that. So how do we accommodate something like this where we almost have subcategories of food which require slightly different properties, but they all still have these basic food item properties as well? Well, we can create new classes for those different food items, which then inherit from the main menu item class. And when a class inherits from or extends another class, it basically inherits all of the properties and methods from the parent class. So let's try creating a new class for pizza items, which extends this menu item class. The way we do that is by typing class, then the name of the class, pizza in this case, and then using the extends keyword to say that we want this class to extend the menu item class. And now this pizza class is gonna inherit any methods and properties from the menu item class. So the format method and the title and the price properties. Now then, we said the reason for making a subclass like this is for extra properties unique to this particular type of food, right? So for example, we might want all pizzas to have a toppings property which isn't present on other food items. So let's create a new property, which will be a list of strings called toppings. 
and they're all going to be stored as strings, right, inside this list. So things like mushrooms, peppers, olives, etc. Now, when we create a new pizza object, we want to pass in those toppings as an argument, much like we did with the title and the price for menu item objects. So in that case, we need a constructor function for the pizza class. So let's create that by saying pizza. And then inside parentheses, we can say this dot toppings. All right. So now when we create a new pizza object, we're going to pass in this toppings argument. So let's quickly do that. So then I'm going to change this from menu item to pizza like so. And it's going to use this class then and this constructor. And we need to change these things to just the toppings. So the toppings is a list of strings. So I could say mushrooms. And then we'll just add in another peppers. So we're creating a new pizza object right here. However, we get an error down here. Notice this red line. And it says the implicitly invoked unnamed constructor from menu item has required parameters. So this error is basically telling us that we're creating a new pizza object which extends the menu item class. And when we create a new pizza object and inherit from the menu item class, the menu item constructor automatically gets invoked. And when that gets invoked, it doesn't have access to the title or the price property for the new pizza. And that makes sense because we've not passed those into the pizza constructor. So to fix this, first of all, we need to pass in a title and a price where we create a new pizza object. So let me add a second argument, which will be a string, and that's going to be the title. And I'm going to call this pizza a veg volcano. So hot and spicy pizza, all right? And then we also need to give it a price, which is going to be $15.99. All right. So we pass the arguments in now, but we don't accept them as parameters yet inside the constructor function. Now then, when we do this, the aim is to accept those values and then pass them into the parent constructor up here in the menu item class. So we can do that in a couple of ways. The first way is to, first of all, accept the parameters into the function, but we don't use the this keyword anymore because we're not setting them as properties inside this pizza class anymore. Instead, we can just declare the types of those parameters and their names, which are the title and the price, which is strings, and integers. Then after the parentheses, we can add a colon and invoke a special function called super. And this super function will explicitly invoke the constructor function in the parent class. And we can pass then the two arguments, the title and the price into this super function, and they'll be received in that parent class constructor so they can be set. So we're passing the values into a new pizza and accepting them in the pizza constructor and then we're passing them into the parent constructor using this, uh, this special super function. And this will all work, but there's actually a shorthand version of this, which is much easier. So all we'd have to do is remove the colon and the super function. And then inside the pizza constructor, we can remove the explicit types and just instead say super.title and super.price. And this is a little bit like saying this.toppings. But where we use super, Instead of assigning the values inside the pizza class, it assigns them inside the parent class. All right. And now everything should work the same way. But this is much better, in my opinion, and it's really readable, too. So let's make sure that everything does still work by running the application. Just hit run. It's going to take a couple of seconds. And then hopefully you're going to see that everything still runs as normal. Cool. So then, my friends, that's classes in a nutshell. There is more to them than we've covered here, but I think that's enough to get started with. In the next lesson, we're going to carry on using classes and we're going to look at something called method overriding.